Hey everybody, a little late, but uh, I'm here. Ask the Realtor live at lunch, now moving to, see what I'm going Tuesdays at noon or 12.10 today, by the way. And the reason for that is why? Apparently there's a lot of Realtor stuff going on on Wednesdays, and so I'm going to be called out on Wednesdays to be able to go and do those. Sorry, my hair is a little bit messed up. But now I'm showing you a whole bunch of houses this morning. Hey, everybody. It's Wesley Van Voris. You can know me as Wally. I am a uh, real estate associate broker for ERA Decker Real Estate. Phone number 692-3665. It's right there on the wall. You can see that. Gary, thanks for joining us. And uh, Dick and Alan and Joan, Teresa. Yeah, better late than never. That's right, Gary. Uh, Corky, thanks for joining us today. So listen, uh, this may be a short show because I've been out running around showing houses, uh, four houses in the middle of nowhere today through detours. By the way, how did you like the detours yesterday? Did anybody get caught in any, any of that mess? Uh, unfortunately, uh, God rest his soul, somebody passed away uh, in that accident yesterday. But it's weird how one mishap on one roadway can affect all the other roadways uh, in the area. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Front Street was backed up for a little bit yesterday uh, for quite a while. So, thank goodness that's over with. Today, by the way, just so you know, is out traveling around. Tunnel Road was all messed up because of the, uh, uh, I don't even know what they were doing up there, but I had to go all the way around the mountain as she come. Nobody cares about my travel. So, let's just talk about a few things today. Ask the Realtor Live at Lunch moving to Tuesdays at noon because there tends to be a whole lot of realtor stuff that go on for us realtors. Uh, I'm not talking about showing houses or selling houses or contracts or closings, although hopefully that will be. Uh, but there's a whole lot of that stuff going on in, on Wednesdays at noon. That's when the association, the G-Bar Association, Greater Binghamton Association of Realtors, does a lot of their stuff. Lunch and learns and that kind of things. So for since I've been doing the show for, I don't know, how long has it been? A couple of years? Um, I've had to miss out on all those things for the most part. So we're going to do this uh, on Tuesdays. So let's talk about a couple of things. First, we're going to talk about um, the correct way to sell your home in Greater Binghamton, which encompasses pretty much all the area that you care about when you're listening or watching the show. Um, the second thing is uh, what some buyers need to know when buying a house in Greater Binghamton. So first of all, interest rates have dropped a bit. The Fed has dropped the interest rate a little bit. Interest rates on mortgages, uh, I'm just asked the question on what they are today, and I haven't got the answer back yet. I'll hopefully be able to get that for you before the end of the show. By the way, can everybody hear me okay? I think my microphone's on the inside here instead of on the outside. Um, so what you need to know to sell your house in Greater Binghamton. So know the numbers, know the strategy. And when I say strategy, here's what I want to tell you. And this is what I tell my sellers when I go to see them uh, at their house. Let's have a strategy. Let's figure out what exactly we're going to be doing for the next six months to get your house sold. Let's hope that it doesn't take six months on the contract that we're signing. But here's what I plan on doing. Here's what I think we need to do. Let's keep our heads up and let's work on this as a team. Because I think when we sell a house, yes, I'm the realtor. I'm the guy that's doing the heavy lifting. I'm the guy that's doing all the other stuff out there. And a lot of times you don't know that we're doing this stuff because it's just day-to-day -day stuff and we're just punching away and sending stuff out and making phone calls and trying to get people to come see your house. Um, and then all of a sudden people just start coming in. But know this, by the way, price sells, period. Can you get a better price on your house in the spring or in the fall? Yeah, depends. Springtime, maybe, depending on how much inventory is out there. But know this, when you call me and say, hey, I want you to come take a look at my house, um, understand this. We're going to be talking about a lot of things. We're going to be talking about where I think your house should be, you know, price between here and here. Um, we're going to be talking about what's going to happen if we overprice your house by a little or by a lot. How fast do you want to sell your house? All that comes into play when we decide what list price we're going to start out at on your house. First thing I'm going to tell you, by the way, is if I come in and say, I think your house is going to sell between 145 and 150, and you say, well, can we start at 185? I'm going to hem and haw about that a bit, and I may just say, yeah, we can do that for two weeks, but if we get nobody in, nobody here to look at the house, then we need to be reducing the price of your house. And I'm going to make people start signing that. 
because sometimes they forget that we talked about that. Well, maybe in a couple more weeks we'll get somebody. Maybe somebody from New York City will come up with those deep pockets and buy my house. Listen, nobody's going to overpay for your house, not when they go buy a better priced house, uh, the same or better quality down the street. Your house is worth what your house is worth. When I decide to sell my house, I'm not going to price it. I'm going to ask somebody of the firm that I work with to come in, maybe three of them. We'll go with three of them. And I want to have them come in because, you know what, we're too close to it. Why? Because we have emotional ties to our home. We think our homes are worth a million dollars. They're not. Usually, I'd like to sell one of yours if it is. But so with knowing that, understand that if you start, if you tell me right now, I want to get out of my house by the first of the year, tick, 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 time is ticking away. We're into fall now. If you say you want to be out by uh, December 31st or January 1st, and you tell me that on a $150,000 house that you want to price it at one ninety, dollars you're out of your mind. I may just say that to you, by the way. So understand this. Price sells, period. What happens if we overprice your house? I'm, I'm like a broken record here. If you, if you go back through YouTube and you scroll back through a few of these Ask the Realtor videos, you're going to find me talking about this a lot. Why? Because it happens a lot. People want to sell their home. They want to move on. They want to move to Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada. They want to move to Nova Scotia, some of them maybe. And then they take and, and they, they ask you to come in and say, hey, Mr. Realtor, Mrs. Realtor, we really value your opinion. Come in and price my house. And we do. And they go, nah, we think you're full of crap. So instead of, instead of putting the price here, we want you to make the price here because we can always come down. True but I'd really rather not have to waste the time to come down too much because if we have to reduce the price $40,000, it's going to take a long time to get here. If you do it all at once, people are going to go, whoa, what's wrong with that house? So let's price the house accordingly. You are not going to put, if you had a yard sale and you were putting out all your little teacups and you put a price tag of $15 on each one of them, unless they're made of gold or some sort of porcelain and there's some sort of collectible, no one's buying them understand that. <coughs> so getting back to what I was going to say, let's have a strategy. There are different strategies that we come up with between you, me, the wife or the husband. We make sure that we are on the same table this uh, on the same on the strategy thing. Why? Because at different times of the, of the year are different things that we want to do to get your house noticed and get it sold. Why is that? Because people's mindsets go off in different directions at different times of the year. And why do I say this? Is this a selling point? Yeah. Human behavior tells us that people do different things at different times. And sometimes they do the same thing over and over and over again. So if you notice these trends, if you notice these tips, and I do, we can take advantage of those and help you get your house sold quickly. Quickly doesn't mean for a lot more money, it means for what the house is worth, okay? So with that being said, we are now ticking down to the end of the year. We talked about this last week. If you missed it, I'll talk about it again briefly. We've got until about October 15th, maybe the 20th, to get your house under contract to get it sold by the first of the year. Why is that? Well, you say, well, if we sell it by November 1st, that gives us still four, it gives us eight weeks, right? It gives us two months. Doesn't really. Why? Because the week of Thanksgiving, everyone's taking the week off. Trust me, we have buyer's attorney, seller's attorney, bank's attorney, your agent, our agent. I want to say that. You've got five people or more appraisers, maybe, right? Mortgage processors. You may have seven people in the chain, all involving your house. Home inspector, maybe eight, right? Maybe eight people involved, and someone in that chain is going to be off, I swear to God, going to be off the week of Thanksgiving and the week of Christmas, or the week between Christmas, <coughs> excuse me, Christmas and New Year. You're now cut down to six weeks. Maybe you're cut down to five weeks. 
especially if that holiday is in the middle of the week. And I don't know where they, they fall this year. So understand your numbers. You have to know the numbers, right? The numbers on the calendar. If you got five weeks to get your house sold in it and closed, God bless you if you think you can, because guess what? Everybody else is pushing nerves at the same time. How many real estate attorneys do you have out there? Yeah, not as many as you might think. <coughs> so all of them are trying to condense all that time, and all of them are looking to take time off during that time. So guess what? Get your house price now. If you want to get it sold by the first of the year, <coughs> excuse me, I got a tickle in my throat. Now's the right time to do it. So what do you do? Price the house right. Maybe you might want to discount the price a little bit. You think? If your house is the best priced house on the block, take a little bit less money. Why? Because money talks. And think about this money-wise, by the way. Right now, our school tax bills just came out. So if, you're, if you've paid your school tax bill for the coming year, if you were to get your house sold by December, they're going to, or by the January 1st, they're going to prorate your taxes. They're going to prorate your tax. So what that means, basically, I'm having trouble talking too, is the fact that if you sell by, by December 31st, the taxes that you've already paid for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, I think August and uh, in August, that's all going to come back to you. That could amount to several thousand dollars. So if you reduce the price of your house a couple of grand more, you may be getting it on the back end. Ask your realtor to do the numbers for you. Ask him to do the calculations or her to do that. Price your house accordingly. Guess what? We are in the southern tier of New York. We're not going to get San Francisco prices on our houses here. We're not. We're not going to get Albany prices on our houses here either. It's just that simple. So price your house accordingly if you want to get it sold. A lot of times, I'm telling you, every single realtor goes through this. And I'm just going to say this first, then I'm going to move on to buyers real quick. Every re realtor goes through this, including myself. We come out and we give you the price. You say, I don't think I want to start at that price. I think I want to start at this price up here. So can we do that? And of course, we always say, yeah, because why? Because we're dumb and we want to help you. But we know, and we tell you up front, probably ain't going to sell for that, but let's try. And guess what? You can hold an open house. You can hold three open houses. You know, you can put stuff in the newspaper. You can put everything out on Zillow. You can put all these big pictures out there saying, hey, great bargain, blah, blah, blah. People know the price of things because they're all, buyers are already researching. This is another previous show. Buyers have been researching homes for 18 months before they go to look at any of yours. So they know what's out there probably more so than you, and they know what your house should be priced at. So we all get caught up in, as a realtor saying, yes, we'll list your price for that at that price, even though we know it's too high, and we tell you it's too high, but let's try it, and we do, and we spin our wheels trying to get it sold for a few months, and six months later comes by, you sit back and go, my realtor hasn't done anything for me, okay, and you call another realtor. And your realtor says, your house was priced too high. Oh, okay. Well, maybe he didn't tell me that. Chances are they did. Um, so then you go on and you list it with another realtor at a lower price and they get it sold. No one wants to admit that they're wrong. That's okay. I get it. Um, I've had plenty of people that have called me later on that said, hey, can you sell my house? My realtor didn't do anything for me. And I look and I see the price was too high or something else was wrong. But you know what? Here's the thing. Get your price on your house, make sure it's priced accordingly right at the beginning, and you should be set to go. And if you haven't, here's the strategy, by the way. Price your house. This is what we're going to talk about, by the way, if you call me. Let's get your house priced right, okay? Let's have a strategy. Even if it's a little bit too high, that's better than way too high. Okay, let's have a strategy. In the first two weeks, if we don't get anybody to come through and make an offer on the house, let's already build in a price reduction. Let's make sure that we're all in agreement that we're going to reduce it 500 or 1,000 or 5,000, whatever it may be. But let's talk about it at first. So we know that come two weeks, we're going to do this. And come another two weeks, we're going to do this. And then maybe we'll all have an open house and reduce it a little bit more. And then maybe we'll do something else here. But let's have a strategy for the first couple of months to see where we're at. And let's hope that we don't have it on the market for two months, okay? But strategy, yes. Let's face it. Football teams, they have a game plan. Baseball teams, they have a, a game plan as well. Every sporting event, any team that wants to be a winner, 
will come out and they will have a game plan. Whether it works or doesn't work, they still have a game plan. Guess what? In the real estate world, we, as your listing agent, need to have a game plan to make sure that you come out on top and you do it quickly. All right? Let's try to get let's try to get that house sold with between this time and this time, and let's not have to wait another six months or another year to get it sold. Because if it sits on the shelf too long, people have a problem with it, and you're going to end up paying less in the long run than you are up front. All right. It's called Ask the Realtor Live at Lunch. Hi, I'm Wally with ERA Decker Real Estate. Buyers, I'm going to talk to you about this real quick. I'm not going to harp on it too much. Listen, if you're going to look to go on out and buy a house, let's be darn sure that you are actually going to want to buy that house. Here's the reason why. If you're dipping your toe in the water and you're not really sure, all you're doing is wasting everybody's time and you're wasting your time as well. All right, let's make sure that you're ready to pull the trigger. Here's the reason why too, because everybody's out there working for you. If you get out the first week or two weeks or three weeks when you're buying that house and you put that house under contract and you say, yeah, I'm not sure about this. Maybe I need to get out, then get out then see what you can do to get out of your contract. If you wait until you get down the road, if you wait till the inspections have done and the appraisers, appraisals have been done, if you wait till the commitment letter has been, been uh, put out and all the inspection issues have been fixed and everybody has moved out of the house, guess what might happen to your, secure, to your earnest money deposit? You may not get it back. Why? Because if you decide, hey, I'm out because I got cold feet or something else is going on, um, there's going to be a lot of people upset about that. So my point being is this, and I'm not going to harp on it too much. Just if you're looking to go and buy a house, let's make sure that you're ready to buy and follow through. I mean, if something doesn't seem right, then it probably isn't. But I'm here to tell you that if you are ready to buy the house, let's do it. If you're not ready to buy the house, let's just wait until you are, Okay. It's called Ask the Realtor Live at Lunch. We have moved to Tuesdays, okay? And I'm going to look to see if anybody has written anything back for me. Uh, hi, Gary. And Gay, how are you? I showed one of Gay Satro's houses today, by the way. What's the average price for a four-plus bedroom house in the Shenango Fork School District? Ellen, it depends on where you're at. But I guess if it's a newer house, you're probably going to be paying in that 240 to 260 range. Maybe. I think that's probably depending on what neighborhood it's in. If you're over there off of uh, the River Road, probably 220 to 240, depending on uh, the house. Uh, and Gary Klein says, I never take days off. Hey, Wes, you, you got all the ideas what's on your house? Okay, whatever. Um, anyway, <laughs> my friend Greg Bamberton is such a weirdo. So here's the deal. We moved to Tuesday. It's called Ask the Realtor Live at Lunch on Tuesdays. If you want to watch this video later, if you have a question, write it in the comment section. We will get to it. I will answer it. I swear to God, I will. If you want to see more of these videos, I've got a YouTube channel. It's called Wally Van Voorst. Simple as that. Go there. There's a whole lot of how-to videos on how to buy and sell a house in Greater Binghamton. Um, you can catch me on my Facebook page, my business page, which is just Wesley Van Voorst. Also, I've got a website called WallyGetsItDone.com. And why is that? Because we go the extra mile here with me and my team to make sure you get into your house or get your house sold. So it's called Ask the Realtor Live at Lunch. Peace out, Boy Scout. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, Tuesday.